All right, thanks for watching and welcome to the last one of our convergence tests. And this one is the most fun test of them all because essentially it just says that ev basically every alternating series converges. So let me first of all define what it means for a series to be alternating. So definition, an alternating series It's simply a series of the following form. Of the form, mm. either the sum of minus one to the n a n or the sum of minus one to the n plus one a n, where uh, a n is non negative. Essentially, all that it is, is just a series that alternates between plus and minus signs. So, for instance, consider the following thing. The sum from n from 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n plus 1, uh, a n. No, minus 1 to the n plus 1 uh, over n. <laughs> Now, what is the first term? So minus 1 to the 1 plus 1, it's 1. And so we get 1 over 1, so plus 1. And then minus 1 to the 2 plus 1, that's minus 1. So we get minus 1 half, and then plus 1 third, and then minus 1 quarter, plus 1 fifth, minus da da da, etc, etc. So it's really a series that alternates between plus and minus signs. And in this case, just as I indicated before, uh, what is a n? A n is just 1 over n. So this is indeed of the form minus 1 to the n plus 1 times a n. All right, and now without further ado, here's the alternating series tests. And uh, it essentially says under some very mild conditions, the alternating series converges. So... Here's the alternating series test. Namely, if a n is non-negative, decreasing, and converges to zero, then the alternating series converges. So then the sum of minus 1 to the n a n converges. Or similarly here as well. Okay, so for instance, here, what we had, we have um, a n was um, 1 over n. So example, we had here a n, again, which is 1 over n. Well, it's non-negative, it's decreasing, and 1 over n goes to 0, so... What this is saying is that the sum of minus 1 over n a n, or in this case as well, the sum of minus 1 to the n plus 1 a n over n, this series converges. Okay. So again, under very mild assumptions, which are proven, you know, which usually hold in the series that we study, we get that the alternating series converge. All right, and now let's prove this and we'll prove the following version. So let's show that the sum of minus one to the n a n converges. And for this, we would like to use our Cauchy criterion, which means that the uh, tail of the series becomes arbitrarily small. So let epsilon be given. And remember that the sequence a n converges to zero. And this is super important because otherwise the result is not true. And then since a n goes to zero, for sure we can find some value that's less than epsilon. That value, let's call it a capital N. So since a n goes to zero, 
there is some capital N with a capital N, maybe here, a capital N is less than epsilon. And then we want to show somehow that the uh, tail of the series is less than epsilon. So with that same n, so with that same capital N, if n is greater or equal to m is greater than capital N. So remember, this is the hierarchy. First we have capital N and then m and then n. What I'm claiming is the following. So claim. Claim is that if you consider the tail of the series, which we want to show it small, so k from m to n of minus 1 to the k, a k, I'm claiming that this is less than uh, the first term a capital N. And in fact, in this case, we would be done because remember, a capital N is less than epsilon. Because then we would have found some threshold capital N, such that after the threshold, the tail of the series is less than epsilon. And then we would be done. So all that's left to show is to prove the claim. So, proof of claim. All right, so let's consider this sum, like absolute value, sum from k, from m to n, of minus 1 to the k. A k? Well, that's just absolute value of minus 1 to the m, a m, plus minus 1 to the m plus 1, a m plus 1, up to the, the, the minus 1 to the n, a m. Alright, and there are a lot of minus ones, so this just screams to be factored out. So let's factor out minus 1 to the m. So that becomes minus 1 to the m of a m minus a m plus 1 dot 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 up to minus 1 to the n minus m a m. However, remember, this is plus or minus 1. So if you take absolute value, it becomes absolute value of plus or minus 1, which is 1. And so in the end, we're left with am minus am plus 1, dot, 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 up to minus 1 to the n minus m, am. Now, here's the thing, this is either plus or minus 1, depending on whether this is even or odd. So if this is even, we get plus. If this is odd, we get minus. So uh, let's just do it by cases. First, assuming this is even, I'm sorry, first assuming if this is odd, and then assuming that this is even. So again, remember we tried to study am minus am plus 1, Da, 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 plus minus 1 to the n minus m, a m, and our goal was to show that this is less than a capital N. And as I said before, we need to study this in cases depending on whether n minus m is odd or even. So, case 1. n minus m is odd. Then the point is, minus 1 to the n minus m becomes minus 1. Think like minus 1 cubed. So really our scenario is as follows. So am minus am plus 1 plus da 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 plus minus 1 to the n minus m an becomes here minus. So really uh, what you're dealing with is a term like as follows something like a3 minus a4 plus a5 minus a6, for instance. And notice what's nice about this is that we can group the terms into packs of two. So really this thing is 
the same as AM minus AM plus one plus dot 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 plus uh, I think uh, plus sorry AN minus one minus AN. But the point is we can group this into packs of two. And now remember, our sequence was decreasing. What does decreasing mean? It means that the past is bigger than the future. So the previous term AM is less than the next term, so it's bigger than the next term AM plus one. So each of those terms is actually non-negative. So AM minus AM plus one is non-negative and AN minus 1 minus AN is non-negative, and everything in between those packs of 2. They're non-negative. So really, you're taking uh, a sum of non-negative terms, which becomes non-negative, and therefore we can remove the absolute value. So this is greater or equal to 0. So really, this thing then just becomes as follows. AM minus AM plus 1, and you'll see why I do this, plus AM plus 2, plus dot, 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 and then um, minus AN minus 2, plus AN minus 1, minus AM. Okay, and let's take again the example of A3 minus A4 plus A5 minus A6. Now, the idea is you want to rewrite this sum in a more clever way, but let's now look at the middle packs. Maybe let me add a couple more terms. Uh, minus a6 plus a7 minus a8. Well, now let's look at the middle packs minus a4 plus a5 and minus a6 plus a7. So let's write this as follows. am minus am plus 1 minus am plus 2. Da, 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 up to minus an minus 1 minus an, as minus 2 minus an minus 1 minus an. Now, again, remember our sequence was decreasing, so each of the terms in parentheses is positive. So this thing is positive, this thing is positive. So essentially, you're just adding negative terms. So in particular, this term becomes less than or equal to AM minus AN. But now remember, well, minus AN becomes negative. So this becomes less than or equal to AM. And last but not least, remember that M was bigger than the threshold capital M. So definitely AM is less than or equal to A capital M. And that's precisely what we wanted to show because remember at the beginning we started with the absolute value of the tail of our series. So the point is in this case we're done. Okay, in the case where n minus m is odd, we're done. So let's just do the case n minus m is even. So case two. n minus m is even. But then in that case, we have minus one to the n minus m. That's like minus one squared, so one. Okay. And therefore, we're, we're led to a series of the following form. Let's say a3 minus a4 plus a5 minus a6 plus a7. Then let's look at our sum. What did we have? We had am minus an plus one, dot, 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 plus, dot, 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 plus, uh, minus 1 to the n minus m, a n, but then this becomes a plus 1, and that becomes a m minus a m plus 1, da, 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 plus a m. Now here's the thing, we cannot group everything in tax of 2, because now there is an odd number of terms, but what we can do, we can group the first couple of terms in packs of 2. 
So everything but the last term. So this really becomes, if you want, AM plus, uh, let's say, or I guess AM, um, sorry, AM minus AM plus one, dot, 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 plus, dot, 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 plus, uh, a n minus two, minus a n minus one, plus a n. But here's the thing again: the past is bigger than the future, so this is greater or equal to zero. And everything in parentheses is greater or equal to zero, and by assumption, this is greater or equal to zero. So the whole sum is now negative, so we can actually remove the absolute value. So this is am minus am plus 1 plus dot 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 plus an minus 2 minus an minus 1 plus an. All right, and now essentially what we'll do, we'll consider the following packs. a3 and then this term, this term, this term, and you'll see we'll just be adding negative terms. So now... What this sum is, it's again am minus am plus 1 plus am plus 2, dot, 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 and then minus am minus 1 plus am. Which now you can just rewrite as am minus am plus 1 minus am plus 2, dot, 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 minus a n minus 1 minus a n. But again, the past is bigger than the future, so this is greater or equal to 0, and this is greater or equal to 0. So you're just adding negative terms to a m, so for sure this is less than or equal to a m, which is also, uh, again, just as before, is less than or equal to a capital And therefore, even, even in the even case, we are done. Last but not least, just two little remarks. So I don't know if it's apparent in this proof or not, but first of all, we're done. We have shown the alternating series test, but uh, I don't know if it's apparent 100% in this proof or not, but for the alternating series test, we actually get a very nice estimate. So. Let me just hint at it, but not prove it. So we have estimate. Namely, if capital S is the sum of your series, so sum from, let's say, n from 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n, minus 1 to the n, if you want, a n. And remember, S n is your partial sum sum from k from 1 to n of minus 1 to the k, a k, then we can actually estimate the error between our partial sum and our series s, and it's very elegant actually, then the difference between s n and our limit s is actually always less than or equal to the next term, so the a n plus first term. And in fact, that's kind of what we've shown, because we've shown that the tail of the series is less than or equal to a capital N, except here it's not a capital N, it's the next term of this series. And in fact, let me give you an example. For instance, one can show that the sum, if you like, from n from 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n, you can show that it's ln of 2. And this will be done for power series, which is a bit beyond the course. And then what this is saying, so let's say with n equals to, let's say, uh, 1 minus, uh, with let's say n equals 5, yeah. This is saying that if you take 1 minus 1 half plus 1 third minus 1 fourth 
and plus one fifth. So if you take the sum of the first five terms and compare it to ln of two, that error will always be less than the next term, which is one sixth. And in this way, we get better and better estimates of our sum. In fact, in my opinion, this kind of makes sense because suppose this is the value of the sum. So suppose this is capital S. Then what is an alternating series? It just alternates between negative and positive values. So suppose, for instance, this is uh, Sn. Then the difference between Sn and S what this is saying will always be smaller than the next term. So this distance here will always be smaller than a n plus 1. So the distance between s n and the value of the series will always be less than or equal to, if you want, the distance between 0 and a n plus 1, which is just a n. Last but not least, to conclude this section, I would just like to remind you what conditional convergence means. So first of all, remember what absolute convergence is. So recall, if the series of absolute values of a n converges, then the original series is said to converge absolutely. So absolutely not as in like absolutely true, but rather it converges with absolute values. And remember, we also shown that absolute convergence is better than convergence. So if a series converges absolutely, then it converges. Which says that in the world of convergence series, there are really two kinds of series either those that converge absolutely or those that converge but do not converge absolutely. And those series, we call them conditionally convergent. So conditionally convergent. So for instance, um, so definition, if the series itself converges, but it doesn't converge absolutely, but the series of absolute values diverges, then the series is called conditionally convergent. And the reason I'm mentioning this now is because the alternating series test is a good test to show if something converges conditionally. And by the way, there's a really neat fact that says if you converge conditionally, but not absolutely, so in other words, if you converge conditionally, then you can really rearrange the sum to really get any limit you want. How cool is that? So, for instance, uh, consider the series that we already talked about. Consider the series from 1 for infinity minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n, which remember is 1 minus 1 half plus 1 third minus 1 quarter, etc., etc. This series converges because we use the alternating series test converges by alternating series. But if you take the absolute value of each term, then let's see what we get. But the series of absolute value of this minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n. It's just the series of, again, this is plus or minus 1, so we get 1 over n, which just becomes the harmonic series. So 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third plus 1 quarter 
you see you're turning all the minuses into pluses, and that diverges. And therefore, um, second diverges. Therefore, what about the original series? We call this um, uh, conditionally convergent because it converges but doesn't absolutely converge. Uh, so, uh, doesn't converge absolutely. And therefore, in the end, we get that this series is, con is conditionally convergent. Thank you so much. This concludes our exploration of all the series tests. So now feel free to apply them without feeling guilty about whether they're true or not. Uh, all right. Thank you very much.